When starting Mathitude, you are presented with a quick start. The quick start facilitates fast and easy map creation, as well as easy access of maps that have already been created. I am going to use the quick start to open a map that I already created. I will then click OK and browse for the map I would like to open. Then click Open, and Maptitude brings that map onto my screen. There are a variety of windows associated with this Maptitude session. Each of those windows are detailed in the Maptitude Basics webinar. So if you are not familiar with them, please do join us for that webinar for additional information. So I'm going to begin uh, by speaking about this map that I already have created that shows some different retailers in the state of Massachusetts. I am interested in looking only at Massachusetts for this case. I don't really want to see any of the other surrounding states. And I will begin by masking these other states so they can't be seen. Maptitude does offer the ability to hide features quickly and easily by creating a mask. And the first step in that process is to select or filter on screen the features that I want to keep. Since I want to keep everything within the state of Massachusetts, I will first need to locate the state layer in the display manager on the left side of my map, right click on that layer to expose the context sensitive menu and select make working layer. This will ensure that the features I'm filtering are from the layer I want. The selection toolbar shown in my screen now also indicates the layer whose features I'm selecting. So I can see that that is state. I will use the select by pointing tool in the selection toolbox to click on Massachusetts. Massachusetts, as you can see, has turned red. I can then mask the state by locating the tools menu at the top of my screen. From that tools menu, choosing the reports menu, and from the reports menu, selecting mask. Simply clicking OK, adds a mask to my map so that I only see those features which are within that state that I had highlighted by selecting. Now with this mask, Massachusetts has been made to look kind of like an island. That's not really the effect that I wanted. So I can bring kind of a highlight to Massachusetts without losing the other states by making adjustments to that mask. I will do this by activating the pointer tool at the draw in the drawing toolbar at the bottom of my screen, clicking anywhere in that background of the mask to expose all of those shape points. And then from that context sensitive menu, selecting properties. In the properties dialog, I'm going to change the fill opacity from 100 to 60 and then click OK to apply those changes and close the dialog box. So I now have the other states showing. Uh, they are now showing much more muted though. I can get rid of all of these little shape handles by activating another item that will give me shape handles, in this case the legend. Shape handles appear here now. And just turn that legend off and back on using the show hide legend button in the tools toolbar. Now that my map is set up in the way that I want so that I'm only looking at my state of interest, I am ready to begin creating my drive time rings. And I will open the drive time ring toolbox using the open drive time rings toolbox tool at the top of the Maptitude window. I can click on features on the map to make them my origin using the click locations tool in the drive time rings toolbox. 
By activating that tool, I can click on any location and it gets a bullseye indicating that it has been selected as an origin. The toolbar also updates to specify how many origins have been clicked on. I can go on and use those origins and add others, or those origins can be cleared using the Clear Locations tool. I'm just going to slide this toolbox over a little bit, and I want to be able to use my own data as these origin points. To do this, I will click on the Select Locations tool in the Drive Time Rings toolbox. This adds another section to the toolbox. And in this case, I want my layer that has the BJ's Wholesale Club location to be the origin. So I will select that layer. And I know that I wanted to create three rings, each of five minutes. Having specified that in this toolbox, I am now ready to click the Create Drive Time Rings tool. Maptitude will use those origins to create three five-minute rings for each origin, and it will add that new Drive Time Rings layer to my map. And keep in mind, there are 25 locations that I'm using that I'm creating these interval rings for. And now that this has been added to the map, those drive time rings are displayed. The drive time rings toolbox does have uh, the ability to calculate demographics and customize them for you. To begin that process, I'm going to click on the Options button in the Drive Times toolbox. And I will then click on the Configuration tool to open the Demographics settings. If I wanted to adjust the actual demographics and the fields that are available, I can do so by clicking the Aggregation Settings button in that toolbox. This opens up an aggregation settings dialog box listing all of the fields available for this demographic report. Those that will be used have a little dot in each field with how they will be included. I can remove fields or add fields by choosing them, clicking the field name, and then choosing the bottom of each column in order to included or not. So if I wanted to add a field, I would do so here, and that gives me the dot. I'm going to leave these fields as they are. I'll click Cancel. But what I do want to do is I want to be able to start counting some features. So I have competitors on this map. I want to know how many competitors are in my 5, 10, and 15 minute rings from my BJ's locations. So I am going to select the competitors layer for the feature counts. I will then click the OK button to return me to the drive time rings configuration and the OK button there to return me to the drive time rings toolbox. I'm now ready to calculate demographics by clicking the calculate demographics button in the toolbox. Maptitude attaches those demographics to the drive time rings I've already created. And opens up those demographics in both the data view that's shown in a separate window, giving that information, and in a report that includes my map and can be printed. So in my report, I have each of my drive time rings, 
and all of the information, as well as the total count of competitors. And this can be saved or printed. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Go back to my Maptitude map and click on the map. When drive time rings are created, they are created as a temporary layer. So they are added to the display manager on the left side of the screen as a layer called drive time rings. If I want to permanently save this layer, I can do so clicking the save drive time rings layer button and providing a name for the new layer, then clicking save. So I have now saved this drive time rings layer so it can be used on other maps if I wish. If I want to hide it, I can click the green check next to drive time rings layer to leave the layer in the map, but make it so that it is no longer visible. I'm going to close and reopen this toolbox because I want to talk about some additional options. So I'll just close it using the X and reopen it by clicking that button at the top of the screen again. I want to use these drive times, uh, create drive times for my own layer again, as I did in my previous example. So I'll choose that select locations button, use my layer as my BJ's layer, and enter the settings again of three rings and five minutes. So I want to use these BJ's locations. I'm going to go ahead and create those drive time rings. And once those have been created, I also want to use the demographics. So I'm going to click that options button and then the configuration and make sure that my competitors are set up the way that I want so that I'm able to get that additional drive time information. And this time when I do this, instead of getting those rings reporting for each individual without summing up the total of the previous inner ring, I'm actually going to choose cumulative demographics so that they are a sum as those numbers go out. So now when I calculate my demographics and get my report, then the numbers will be successively larger um, as those drive time bands expand. So here I can see that I have increasing numbers of household incomes less than a specific threshold and so on and so forth for the various fields. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into Maptitude and in addition to creating these drive time rings, another exercise which can be very beneficial is to create the distance and time tables that are offered in Maptitude. So if I go up to my tools menu at the top of my screen, under routing and directions, I have a distance and time tables option. I'm going to choose this. And I want to have my BJ's layer be my origins again. And I'll use the name. And I want my competitors to be the destination. And I'm going to leave the rest of these options as they are and simply click OK. After entering a file name, Maptitude goes through and creates the drive time and drive distance between every single one of my origins and every destination, and then opens up these results as an Excel file. So I have these particular locations with the point-to-point -point drive time, um, and on the next tab, the point-to-point -point driving distance. So it's another way that I can look at that information in a meaningful way.